And we're live. Welcome, everybody, here to the Lakers Lounge podcast. I'm Anthony Irwin of Lakers Daily, joined by Raj Chapalu. Uh, actually, hopefully, really soon, officially, of the Lakers Lounge kind of podcast network. We're going to uh, be working on that here in the uh, coming weeks and all of that stuff. Obviously, that is a bunch of content and conversations that is going to be taking place after the season. For right now, the season continues. The Lakers uh, beat the absolute piss out of the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, it was ugly right from the get-go. Uh, Lakers jumped out to an 11-4 lead. I don't think, like, unless unless New Orleans scored the very first bucket, I think this was a wire-to-wire -wire win for the Lakers um, on the road in New Orleans against a hostile crowd, right, that hates Anthony Davis. Um, and mm -hmm. the Lakers just absolutely took it to him for the entirety of the game. So we're going to be talking about the game. We're going to be talking about the scenarios that the Lakers have facing them. Uh, we're going to be talking about Darvin Ham, like doing some some smart Playoff stuff. Darvin. <laughs> Playoff yeah. Darvin is a thing. Um, mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, because, you know, we can't have nice things. It can't just be a nice day. I can't just enjoy that win. Just also enjoy watching the Masters on in the background. I can't also just enjoy the fact that the Lakers secured the eight seed here and would mm -hmm. have a nice, easy track to the to the um, or easier track to the uh, at least Western Conference finals. Uh, no. The Denver Nuggets choked away a game against San Antonio and now sit at the two seed, which means that the Lakers win on um, you know, what is it Wednesday? I think they played their their play in game Wednesday, Tuesday, um, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they all right, so if they win on Tuesday, they have the Denver Nuggets waiting for them right in that first round of of the playoffs. And yep. I'm just gonna say it, like. We'll get back to the game and all of this stuff. I'm just going to say it. Take the night off, AD. No. Like, no, know, just, no, no. Just, you know, make sure your back's okay. I I want nothing whatsoever to do with the Denver Nuggets. Nothing yeah. whatsoever. I would rather deal with a one-game setting against Steph Curry than <laughs> watch the Lakers. <laughs> watch the Lakers have to like go through four games of, of the Denver nuggets. I am just, I am not interested in it whatsoever. No, e I know. I know even if it would piss off the basketball gods to an extent that I think the Lakers may never recover. <laughs> you don't, you don't think we pissed off the basketball gods enough this season. I think we pissed them <laughs> off enough. I think we've got, you know, on their wrong side enough. I'm not, I'm not doing that. The whole point, I know we'll get back to this, but the whole point of the play in Anthony is so that you get two good shots at it, right? The whole point of getting it to seven and eight is you get two good shots at it. If you, if I can live with you losing the first game and then obviously winning the second to become the eighth seed, I can live with that. I cannot go into my summer knowing that we tanked the first game and then Steph had 11 threes and we're home <laughs> or De'Aaron Fox goes nuts. I, I could not live with that, you know, that scenario. So no, don't let's not, you know, piss off the basketball gods even more as we are, we've already done. So no, we're let's, let's not do that. Look, I totally, I get it. This is not something that I say with a whole bunch of pride revived. You're <laughs> right. Raj, please make him shut up. Right. Alex, yes. you're also right. Can't disrespect, can't disrespect the basketball gods, <laughs> but, but this is essentially how I feel. J lock agree. Not saying to tank Tuesday, but if they lose, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> Goes against everything I believe in. Me and you both, I think we were here, sit, sat and laughed at the Clippers for doing similar type of I know. craziness a, a year ago. No, we do not do that. We do not run away from teams, Anthony. As good as the Denver Nuggets are, we do not run away. We do not hide um, against basketball teams. Look, no. all I'm saying is I'm doing some stretching. You know, <laughs> I'm doing some stretching. I'm going to start warming up so that I can run away from the Denver Nuggets. Oh, no. <laughs> like, <I> <laughs> No. Look, man, it's a terrible matchup. They are the best team in the conference by leaps and bounds. They have they like did you were you watching um 
Were you watching the uh, the the ESPN broadcast or the local broadcast of this game? So I was on playback. We were listening on the ESPN broadcast. So I, I did not okay, get to so... hear Billy Mac supposedly shriek in the in the in the thought of the Denver Nuggets. I didn't know. I did not hear that. I was looking for audio of it. I was looking to try to find like his reaction to realizing, Hey, you know, the Lakers. Cause like Billy, I feel like just learns this stuff in the moment. Like I think he literally just shows up and all right, what's their roster? Who's playing for, who are they playing? And then like, just does his game accordingly. Um, So it's like the way I picture it is like, Hey, look at that. Got to the eight seed. You might get to play. You might get to play the two seed here instead of the one seed. This is this is pretty good. And then like right. some producer whispers in his ear, Billy, that means they're gonna play the Denver Nuggets. What? Yeah. Whoa, no, that is whoa. I am not okay with that at all. <laughs> um, we do have a super comment on the subject, so I, I'm just gonna knock it out. Um, right now, Brandon Oming, would you rather lose the first playing game so you can avoid the Nuggets and play OKC in the first round? <laughs> also, how is Cat back before Vando with a torn meniscus? Actually, the 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 Cat and Embiid thing actually really concerns me. Um, I don't, I you know, I'm an old person, so I'm always going to remember how Brandon Roy's career played out. Um, after essentially when you tear your meniscus. Um, there are basically two ways that you can go about recovering from it. Um, you can let it kind of heal and, uh, you know, go about that recovery in, in a little bit more natural way. Um, it takes a lot longer, but when the meniscus or if the meniscus does recover from that kind of a process, it's a lot more stable. The knee is a lot more Mm. stable than plan B, which is often the way that these athletes go about this where they shave down the meniscus and, and they, um, and they, you know, they, they then go through that uh, surgery and then you go through the recovery from the surgery and you're back sooner, but there is a lot more risk involved with that. The stability on that knee from, you know, from that point moving forward, Brandon Roy never recovered from making that decision. We already saw Joel Embiid come back and he had to leave the game from like a non-contact knee thing again so um i legitimately really hope that uh athletes i like this is where the team has to step in and protect the athlete from himself there's Sorry. enough i think data on this front to where like if i if i tear my meniscus i'm not too worried about my my you know explosiveness and i'm not going to be putting as much wear and tear on the knee after i tear the meniscus you know for for, for those of us who are like listening right now who aren't professional athletes and don't rely on our bodies moving forward, you can make that decision a little bit more uh, with, with a lot less weight going on it. Right. But in this case where you have so many of these guys who have done that and then not fully recovered or do recover and immediately, you know, get hurt. And then like, don't ever, aren't ever really the same. We have enough data there to where I wish we would just ditch that approach altogether. Um, But yeah, that's why he is back is because cat went about the surgical route and yeah. and Vando's foot injury is a lot more complicated than a torn meniscus is. Um, but yeah, I um, yeah, I, would I rather lose the play in game, the first play in game, so I can avoid the Nuggets and play OKC in the first? <laughs> Raj, the go the games against OKC have barely been close. Like the uh, Lakers just match up really, really, really well against yeah. OKC. They do. They match up really well with New Orleans as well. Look, if you can, Anthony, if right now you can guarantee me that you lose the first playing game and then you're able to win and you win the second one, fine. That guarantee does not exist. You cannot guarantee me that. No one can. Also, that second playing game could be against the freaking Sacramento Kings who have our number just as much as Denver does. I think Sabonis has beaten Mm. AD seven straight or something like that. Obviously, Denver has a number against it. Nine nine straight, whatever it is. I think their context, you know, provided that you you can provide uh, around that number. But in any case, Sacramento plays us well. Malik Monk's out, of course. I just would not want to go that route. I think that this team has done enough to not only piss off the basketball gods, piss off us, piss off any sort of momentum that you can build. The team finally is starting to play well. You know, hopefully AD is okay, and we'll touch on that later. But no, I am not in that position at all. And 
<laughs> you're gonna kill me right now, Anthony, for saying this, and we'll get into this, I'm sure, as the week goes on, and I, the chat mm -hmm. will kill me for saying those games were close against Denver. We're gonna like, and I, I think we're better. We, <laughs> we are, we, and we're better now. They're which close I won't by score, Raj, but they're all the same script. Like, you like script I'm sure change. occasionally, I'm not, sure occasionally writing, the Washington Generals made the occasional run against oh, the uh, Harlem that Globetrotters. Is, that's not fair. Like, <laughs> that's totally not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> That's not fair. So I won't get into my full Denver rant now, but we should at least have two of the three best players in that series. We should, right? LeBron and AD, one of LeBron and AD should be better than Jamal Murray. And that hopefully, if they are who we think they are, they should be. Mm -hmm. Those Rui's better than he was a year ago. We didn't start Rui Anthony until game four. I think Austin's better than he was a year ago. D'Lo can't be worse than he was a year ago. <laughs> like, that's not possible, right? Denver's at least a did little you bit on worse. That? We did. I don't gamble. You know that. <laughs> I don't, I don't do those type of things, <laughs> but uh, Denver's at least a little bit worse, right? I think the loss, Bruce Brown played exceptionally well, not just for Bruce Brown standards, loss. but he was, he, so it's a, it's a loss for them. Um, Aaron Gordon had 30 in game four or something like that. So like, there are things that you can at least put into perspective. Do I want that? Am I asking for Denver? No. Am I calling them out? No, none of that, none of that stuff. But I, I think that's a better route than um, tanking a playing game. So I uh, don't want to piss off the basketball gods and, Look, first round against Denver, you, you kind of the basketball gods are funny that way. You have to kind of get over the hill that you you stumbled upon, um, and that's the hill you have to get over if you want to do anything uh, um, of value this season. So, bring on Denver. I'd, ra I'd I rather guess. I'd rather somebody like level the hill. <laughs> like I'd I'd, ra I'd rather pay somebody <laughs> to go in there and <laughs> and chop it down before you get dirt. there. Yeah, take off all that dirt. <laughs> excavate the hill and flat to make it nice and flat so that the Lakers okay. can get <laughs> um, let's get back let's let's talk about this game because sure. um it was a really fun one here for the Lakers um as the Lakers beat the uh, New Orleans Pelicans again in New Orleans 124 to 108 and honestly it wasn't even that close it, at one point the Lakers held a, a 32 point lead um I thought a big adjustment in that second half was new Orleans playing Jonas more. Um, yeah. And that like, that'll be interesting in this, in this game on Tuesday against new Orleans. If, if Willie green uh, sees anything there, the thing that sticks out to me, Raj about this um, matchup and basically what set the tone early in this game was the way that LeBron and AD were able to function in the pick and roll uh, because they had, Zion out there, they had Larry Nance Jr. And yeah, you can switch that, um, you know, and, and they were doing a little trapping as well on, on those. Um, but AD is so much taller than everybody there. And LeBron, when he's throwing passes over the top of his head, the ball's leaving that trap um, at yeah. a higher point than just about anybody there too. So the Lakers were just playing volleyball and, you know, uh, LeBron finishes with 17 assists. He had eight in the first quarter. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, Anthony Davis had like 10 shot attempts in the first quarter. Um, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what uh, Willie Green chooses to do to address that kind of concern. Cause that was, that was meat and potato stuff. Like that was super easy for the Lakers to basically pick apart whenever they wanted. Right. And to your Jonas point, uh, the reason he played, I think, was 80 was in foul trouble and and the Pelicans were unable to create any type of offense uh, in the half court. So they just went to Jonas a few times in the post to kind of switch things up. I don't think he'll play much in this matchup. You talked about OKC, how they're a good kind of matchup for us. We match up well with them. I think we match up really well with New Orleans as well, especially when LeBron and AD are both engaged, which we, they will be on Tuesday. Um, we put LeBron on Zion, Anthony, for the whole game. Like pretty much anytime Zion was in the game, LeBron was guarding him. And when Zion can't go through your chest in terms of a physically overpowering way, you're able to kind of stifle what New Orleans does on offense, right? A lot of their offense is built around Zion just bulldozing to the rim and kicking out to shooters. The one shooter we did leave on purpose, which we do every time, is Herb Jones. Herb hit, I think, another four threes tonight. Our, our kind of game plan is to play off him but i thought defensively we you know played the game plan pretty well brandon ingram wasn't able to really get off he you know we threw Rui on him which was nice but our offense was clicking all the cuts i think Rui had like six baseline cut dunks 
And that, mm-hmm. that's just part of the overpowering when there's just not another physical defender. They threw their best defenders on her uh, of Herb Jones, Trey Murphy. They had to use those guys on LeBron, on AD, on even Austin, who was cooking them. And, and that's just tough. Yeah, yeah and, and D'Lo. Uh, Dyson on, on, on D'Lo for big chunks of the game. Right. They had to kind of use their wings on other guys. And when it's Rui tiptoeing around the baseline, he's all of a sudden at the basket. There's no help there, especially to your point of Jonas not playing. They're really small. And Zion's a big kind of physical guy, but he doesn't move his feet well. Like he's just not Mm -hmm. able to laterally shift. Lakers were able to blow by him. AD got a lot of offensive rebounds. His jumper was going a little bit. And LeBron, I thought, got to the basket whenever he wanted. A lot of calls that LeBron didn't get. It was clear the rest were a little bit in his head. Even up 20, up 30, it was clear he was frustrated. But this team just has no one to stop LeBron from getting to the basket. Like, Herb Jones is a really good, like, one of the best perimeter defenders in, defenders in the league. Just not enough in his back pocket, similar to, like, a J.D. McDaniels in uh, Minnesota. Uh, yeah, I like our matchup with them. We played really well. This felt like the in-season tournament again, where the, our phys- they, they just could not match our physicality. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was an awesome win. Hopefully 80 is okay, but we, we, we match up really well with this Pelicans team. I would love to have Vando back. doesn't look like it will be, but he's another guy you kind of throw as a wing defender, but Rui, LeBron and AD, they did a, they did a nice job shutting off the rim. And then the only threes we gave up were really to Herb Jones. So I wonder what New Orleans does. I, they probably don't start Jonas in the Tuesday matchup. I'm guessing Larry Nance starts. We again, just dared, like, it's really tough to beat the Lakers. If you, if you're playing a non-shooter, especially two. Like, it's just really tough yeah. to beat us when, when we're engaged. So, and New Orleans does that. They're going to have a non-shooter on the floor all the time. Um, and I and I think that that works well in our favor. I was really impressed with what the Lakers did to Zion in this one. Because yeah. just the other game, uh, you had a tweet, right, where you said, like, Zion's combination of force Doesn't and, exist. you know, upward mobility. And, and when he has the basketball, because, like, I, I I agree with you about defensively. He doesn't move his feet defensively. He's a he's pretty bad, honestly, defensively, given what, like, he's physically capable of. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, he does have lateral movement on offense, right? When he has the basketball in his sure. hands. And, and like, part of that is that, like, he doesn't need to get fully around people. He just needs to move far enough sideways to not commit a charge, basically. Um, mm-hmm. and, and he knocks so many shoulders backwards that, like, he is really difficult to deal with. But the Lakers, when you have a front court of Rui Hachimura, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, Zion had no idea what to do out there. You know, yeah. um, and, and it honestly kind of reminded me uh, like very different kind of players and builds, obviously. But remember watching that Memphis series and how Jaw was shooting floaters from further and further and further out because the right, Lakers right. basically just took away the paint. And um, and like you're saying, the Lakers are able to do that against the New Orleans Pelicans because Pel- they they tend to have at least one non shooter out there and even their shooters. Right. Like. Like Jose Alvarado, I think shoots a good percentage from there, but I don't know what on what kind of volume. Um, sure. Herb Jones, like I, I think their their only volume three point shooter is Herb Jones, right? I think he made a hundred and seventy threes this year, or Trey Murphy, yeah. Um, Herb Jones, if he shoots an okay percentage, it's not in enough volume to where you're really all that worried about him out there. Nance also shoots it at a decent clip, but I like not at a bunch Thank of you. volume. So the Lakers are, are are at least initially until you know until those guys start knocking down some shots, then you maybe make an adjustment or whatever. But um, at least initially, the Lakers are basically going to live with a lot of what what New Orleans is trying to do offensively. And you know, you mentioned C.J. McCollum and you mentioned uh, Brandon Ingram, and I think one thing that the Laker that those guys, um, what they don't bring to the table that makes them easier to deal with for the Lakers is they don't do a ton of creating for others. So like sure. Ingram would go on, a, on like a single handed run, right? Like at the end of the second quarter, um, I think yeah, he went on like a 17. seven or nine Oh run by himself. Um, mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, CJ McCollum can obviously get really hot, but both of those guys, like when they're playing really well and when they're scoring, it's a lot of pull up jumpers One-on-one. that don't involve mm-hmm. anybody else. Right. And, 
that also makes it a little easier for the Lakers to deal with them defensively. You you kind of live with the mini run there, and you hope that they don't score 60 on you, you know? Yeah. And I think the Lakers essentially or eventually have the personnel that would stop those guys from scoring 60 if things are really heading in that direction, um, even without Vanderbilt, that is. You know, if the Lakers have Vanderbilt, this game, like, the, this matchup, I, I, I think the Lakers would sweep them in a playoff series. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I was really impressed by what Rui did, especially when when Zion would have him in isolation, and you yeah. you could see Zion go to like lower that shoulder and knock Rui back, and then get kind of like surprised, like hold on, he didn't really move as much, <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. the smallest of the three front court players that the Lakers that, have, right? That, that, that's what I was thinking. If you canvass the league, I'm not sure there's a combination, especially just even taking Rui out of it, just a four or five that can switch that. Because what New Orleans does, Anthony, a lot of times, they're very interesting. They'll they'll have Zion catch it, free throw line extended, and then they'll screen for him, right? And obviously teams go under that. But there's not a lot of combinations that can switch that four or five action. And the Lakers are able to do that. So they're able to switch AD or LeBron onto Zion. That's a tough place for him to kind of live at. Zion took a three tonight. You know how rare that is? Like how much of a blue yeah. moon that is of Zion taking a three? And then he also took a bunch of mid-range jump shots because the Lakers are able to kind of wall him off of the paint. Um, and when he's not able to get inside and, again, wreak havoc, that's where you're able to stop them. And uh, I thought Austin and D'Lo, D'Lo has such a gap between his engagement when he's engaged on defense. I thought he was really engaged tonight. There was there were times where they were hunting him, and the Lakers said, it's your job to switch on a C.J. McCollum, and he just stayed straight up. C.J.'s going to take a tough step back three or step back contested two. You live with those. B.I. and Zion also, Anthony, they don't run a lot of actions together, I notice. Like it's usually BI on an island and Zion on his own island. They don't really connect. There's not a bridge between those two. Um, and BI loves as good as BI is, he loves to take those contested shots as well. And that one to hit, I think to end the half, he hit a three to cut it to 17 or whatever. But those are all contested. You keep Ingram out the paint, you keep Zion out the paint, you're gonna be able to beat New Orleans. Um, and the Lakers are just really strangely um match up well against the pelicans so you're right i'm not sure it's a sweep I, like I, I think there's enough talent over there that pelicans what they're really good at is they're deep they have a like a 10-man rotation of, of it doesn't matter actual that's fair i just think like they're gonna get one game for sure but um yeah i'd give them like a five game i just i i, I like our matchups against them too uh, against Jeff zion against Jonas. would it be a would it be yeah, a close sweep. Sweep? oh like, don't, don't do that Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I really, you know, and, and this is what I told um, Aaron yesterday was I, you know, um, I thought that the Lakers would handle their business in in this one, um, and hell, if if I'd have known that they weren't going to use Jonas at all, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have put a lot more on the Lakers to be able to take care of business here in, 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 in that one. But, um, yeah, I, I do think that that's kind of the, 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 the adjustment they're going to have to make is cause there is everybody on the Pelicans can, it was just too easy to be moved. And it's actually kind of alarming how easy it is for Zion to be moved on when he's playing defense, where he just plays, he plays with like essentially what Zion is great at. This is coming from like the weak side, jumping as high as he possibly can and swatting yeah. at the ball as hard as he possibly can. It's kind of like a young JaVale McGee where like you, you, you watch him <clears throat> and you would kind of, and you would say to yourself, like that guy has to be a great defensive player. Look at what he can do. Look how high up in the air he can get and look at all these things. But because of the way that JaVale was, was contesting uh, on those shots, he would oftentimes put himself out of position and then wouldn't be sure. able to recover. And like Zion does a lot of that same stuff too. And, you know, for somebody Zion who is as physically imposing as he is offensively, it's really kind of alarming how often he gets walked under the basket uh, when he's on defense and, and um, you know, how easy it appears to be to set a screen on him. He just doesn't have any motor on that side of the ball. And, you know, like, look, I, I don't cover that team or whatever. Um, and it really appears like everybody there just kind of, is is told like all right we're babe we're gonna be nice to Zion we want to make sure that he sticks around long term but like the way that he doesn't compete defensively like that's gonna put that does put a ceiling on what they're capable of night in night out when they because they no no showed in their biggest game of the season tonight no, absolute yeah. no show 
and it and it was be, and, and the Lakers were scoring basically at will against them. And at no point did Brandon Ingram really uh, impact the game defensively. And at no point did Brand did uh, Zion Williamson impact the game defensively. And if I was you know a Pelicans fan or if I was covering that team, that's where I would start as far as like why are they so inconsistent? Why you know why do they appear to wilt like that? And it's because those who the, that guy Zion it just doesn't appear to care about defense. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it waxes and wanes for him. Like he had a, a game against the Clippers where he, you know, defended Kawhi pretty well down the stretch. Um, I think Zion's worst kind of attributes defensively come off the ball. A lot of times yeah. he's ball watching. Again, a guy like Zion, you brought up the physical gifts. He's also been more athletic than his peers for like ninety nine percent of his life. I'm a, I'm assuming, yeah. right? Like that dude yeah. did not need to be like super engaged on where his you know, tag is coming from. It's like, oh, that guy's about to jump. I'm jumping from the half court. I'm jumping from the free throw line and blocking it, right? Um, yeah. So, like, he's kind of had to adjust for that. I think for Zion, it's just the engagement level, the one. And I think you'll see, you see it in ISO matchups. Like, he defended LeBron tonight in isolation. It didn't defend him well. But there are uh, points and places in games where he turns that up. Uh, but, yeah, their defense is mainly defined by, defined by Herb Jones, by Trey Murphy, by Alvarado, who still is just annoying as hell. Even when you're up 30, Alvarado is annoying. Yeah. Just picking up full court that's kind of where the defense lives at so we'll see with them brandon's defense has also dropped right i thought he was really a plus defender when he was here with the lakers when you become a 27 point or whatever he's at point of game score your defense is going to drop off a little bit just to kind of make up for that but yeah we'll see with the pelicans i i thought zion just struggled offensively and that kind of fed into the rest of his game so tuesday still i think is gonna be tough anthony as as easy as, as much of a blowout as this was um, it's tough to be any team two times in a row. So yeah. I think if the Lakers can't walk in there, like, oh, we have that, we have our matchup set, we know what we're gonna do. I think that team's gonna come out hungry and they're coached well enough by by Willie Green. And um, I think BI and Zion are enough of young stars that they understand that moment. Uh, so we'll see on Tuesday. But no, this was a this was a great win, and we definitely should be on to the uh the uh seven seed, as sad as that sounds to to you. Uh well, no. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Look, like it, you know, like you just said, it's really difficult to beat the same team twice in a row, especially yes. on the road. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, like just credit to oh, the Pelicans no. if they happen to if they happen to win. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> <Who's that? laughs> oh. yeah. It's, I thought you. I thought you were gonna say it's it's hard for any team to beat anyone two times in a row, and like Denver beating us two times in a row would be difficult. I thought that's where that was going, but no, nope. that was... no, that would be pretty easy. I've seen it. They've beaten them like thirteen times in a row, like that's <laughs> fourteen times the charm, maybe. <laughs> um, we got to talk about Darwin because I liked what he did. Um, for chunks of this one, I Cam Sorry. Reddish did not play in this game. Yeah. Um. And I was really nervous, uh, given the way that Brandon Ingram was scoring, that Darvin would kind of overreact and put uh, Cam out there to try to contend with that. Um, he stayed away from that. Uh, you did get Gabe out there. Gabe did play 13 minutes. Um, shockingly, did not score. Just, you know, blows me away, the fact that he wasn't able to, to get out there and impact the game offensively. Actually, the play that Anthony Davis got hurt on yeah, Mr. Layup. occurred because... <laughs> Gabe is so terrible offensively. Um, but but uh yeah, I I really liked there was even a play. Um, I think CJ McCollum uh scored five straight points to cut a lead from like 22 to 17. And mm -hmm. Darwin called a quick timeout. I yeah. was like, who is this? Who is this person? Um so Raj, do you believe that playoff Darwin is a thing? Or do you think he just like, <laughs> he just had one of those like, <laughs> like, uh, oh, what's his name? Alan from the hangover moments where he just goes like, just completely geniuses out and, and, and kills it at the blackjack table. <laughs> I've actually seen the hangovers. That's one movie I've actually hey! in my, my box. You I've not seen reference. two or two or three. I like, I didn't know there, yeah, were, there were, I didn't, I know there's multiples, yeah. but, um, no, I, I, I'm not sure. I like, I thought Darwin coached. Okay. Last, last year, at least in the playoffs. So I think there's actually potential there. I'm not sure if there was something switched tonight. Maybe he's also in playoff mode. And I think there was a, there were two timeouts. I believe they cut it from like 22 to 18 and another one from like 30 to 26. They were nicely used timeouts. I like the rotation tonight. I know you didn't really like Gabe out there. I think Gabe at least fights defensively and gives us an option when, you know, D'Lo's not going. It just gives you another guard to kind of throw out there. Um, don't really like the small lineups. I didn't really like 
some of the four three guard units with Torian. Um, but it looks like we've kind of fit at least this eight to nine man rotation with Gabe getting 10 to 11 minutes here. So hopefully they've kind of landed on a rotation. I also like what Darwin did. I liked our, our offense was flowing beautifully early on all the screens, all the actions, uh, the guard to LeBron screens where we were kind of uh, using to, to create cuts. And I talked about the Rui baseline cuts. D'Lo was also in the short role. Um, Jackson Hayes, I thought, did a nice job screening and rolling as well. So I've liked our offense, how that's kind of progressed. The defensive game plan was good. We'll see. Um, but no, I don't think like Darvin changed at all. I just think these are do or die games. He put LeBron in Anthony tonight. The, the Pelicans cut the lead to 17 or something in the fourth. LeBron came in 10 minutes to go. He cut his, he cut his, uh, he cut his minutes short. So hopefully that's kind of a trend. We'll see. We got one minute with LeBron and AD off the floor tonight. Uh, so, you know, that's also, pro that's also progress. Last time it was three or four. Um, uh, so yeah. there's some progress being had at least, but no, we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what Darvin, um, and his decision makings. And, uh, if he's gotten any better, uh, as a coach, I still, I still, I still have faith that there's a, there's a good coach in there somewhere, hopefully, but, uh, but, but we'll see. But do you think he's changed? Do you think this, this is playoff Darvin? Uh, he's, he's a playoff merchant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a rhetorical question, really, but because, <laughs> uh, like, here's the thing, right? Um, and and um, Justin makes the point here that that really kind of like hammers it all home here, sure. right? And he does so with a super comment, which means Fuck uh, Justin Tyndall writing the best five players as a starting unit finish the season at 18 and six that's 29.3 percent of the season genius job darvin and it's like and this is like what i wrote right for uh, in, in my last thing for um for lakers daily right was like uh you know yeah everybody's really excited that they're all playing together finally and all that stuff but it is kind of like you've, you've so been at a sporting event where they uh where a referee is like clearly pretty bad and they finally make the right call and everybody just kind of like cheers sarcastically. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. like, like that's essentially the vibe that's been described to me. Um, you know, not, that's not like my analysis of the thing. Like that's what people have, have told me from sure. within those walls. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's hard for me to like, even if, even if this is what's actually going on that like Darwin is capable of all of this stuff, but only does like the smart stuff when the stakes are at their absolute highest. Sure. It makes it so like, like the Lakers are going to be going into the playoffs here, right? They have to, they have to win in a one game setting to get to the, to the two seed where you're now going into that series without home court advantage against a team that absolutely owns you. Um, sure. And then, you know, if they don't win on Wednesday or on Tuesday, and then you're you're a single game away from you know you're you're a crazy shooting night from Steph Curry or the Sacramento Kings from your season being over right so like I I don't think that he is all of those things like I I I think you know we got to watch the broken clock you know being correct game in this one <laughs> um, and it just happened to come at a really good time um, but even if like that is that's how we want to feel about the guy the fact that he there is such a stark contrast between him at his best and him at his worst um makes it all the more frustrating that you have to like the much larger sample size indicates that he doesn't seem to get it yeah yeah i think that's the tough part because darvin's kind of filling these two narratives right that he's kind of succeeding in in which he's uh he's a coach that believes in his players to the extreme extent Right. And like, what does that mean? I'm with you during your worst time. So I get the best of times eventually. And I think he kind of stuck like if we're going to do a full referendum on this season and autopsy on this season, I'm sure. And the Torian Rui kind of lineup change is really where the fork in the road of the season turned. Um, and really what that was, was like, hey, I'm going to stick with you, Torian, and I'm going to stick with you, Cam Reddish. And that was obviously the wrong decision. But I mean, if you look at last year, the way that turn was. He saw, hey, I stuck with Lonnie Walker, right? Lonnie did not play for the whole end of the season because we had a trade deadline that brought in another guard that had to get minutes to. And uh, so Lonnie Walker plays game four and goes out and drops 25 or whatever he drops um, and beats the Warriors. So there's like two parts of that. And, and the part with Darwin that hurts the most is he had the answer in front of him the whole time. 
the yeah. front office also paid that option. Like it made it very easy. It's not like Rui and Torian make the same money and you have to kind of decide into the front office kind of made that decision for you. Vando's injury is a nice kind of butterfly effect of what could have happened. But uh, yeah, that's kind of in the past. We've talked about, you know, spilled milk theory and all that stuff uh, on this show. But um, I think like at least last year, me and you sat here after every playoff game and dissected the, like the, the moves and the analysis and what the, the correct moves were. And I think, like fine hold in the first two series he made the right adjustments honestly the adjustment to put I, I bring this up all the time but the adjustment to you know put vando on draymond green so you can you know switch the step draymond pick and roll the adjustment to like to empower austin to be more of an on-ball creator in the memphis series because of the way they were defending because the way dylan brooks was leaning on lebron like i think those are adjustments that you know a good coach would make I think Darwin's fall is going to be this season uh, of just the Rui Torian kind of mix up there, which I think both of us have said Torian was actually a logical pick. If you had to like use logic to kind of pick it, just um, he stuck with it too long. And and that will be uh, his demise. Most, most likely demise sounds so serious, but it, <laughs> it sounds like, a, it, <laughs> like, like <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, like, look, uh, we'll see how, you know, Wednesday goes or Tuesday, sorry, goes and we'll see how, you know, this all plays out and who the Lakers face and all of those things. Um, my larger point here is that, like, this all could have been avoided had they just, like, did the smart thing from the get go, you know, and sure. um, and like, look, I, I also don't want to look back on last year's run and with, like, completely rosy colored glasses because it also took a while for Darwin to make some of the adjustments that needed to be made in some of those series, right? Like maybe the Lakers don't get swept in that Denver series. They probably don't win. Denver was just a better team. Um, but like they, they, maybe they, they rip off, uh, you know, a game here and there by not waiting until game four to start Rui, right. With your season, absolutely on the line. Um, it, it was uh, really evident really early that D'Lo didn't have it in that series. And I think he still stuck with them like a game or two too long in that one too. Right. And, um, you know, look, we'll see how this all turns out. Maybe playoff Darwin is a thing. And look, it also, it also really, really helps that in these games, you have a fully engaged LeBron James, right? Absolutely. The reason that I think Darwin has to be fired this upcoming off season is because you know if you bring him back, you're not going to have a fully engaged LeBron James right from the get-go of the next season. And in this one, like with with the, with the setting being what it was today, you're it's not like LeBron isn't going to play hard in that kind of a game. It isn't like LeBron isn't going to play hard in the playoffs, um, and it isn't like Anthony Davis is going to play hard in the playoffs. Like I, I think, you know, what you're looking at here is a team that is uh, very capable. Um, of of you know out performing some of the shortcomings that are placed upon them um because their two stars are so incredible and i'm right. kind of sort of sick of of hoping that that's what they do right like i'm i'm sick of basically asking lebron and ad to make up for the head coach yeah no that that i mean that's fair i, I think a part of it that you just brought up is the engagement on defense and I think you just saw tonight and you saw in the uh, in-season tournament and you see in other big games when LeBron is engaged defensively, the team, that's how the kind of team moves, sadly. Like the team yeah. kind of moves on LeBron's engine um, and LeBron is engaged defensively. This team is world-class better than it is when he's not. And that's a tough thing. And I'm not trying to give bail for Darwin because um, the amount of money I have, I have just would not make it. That to get him out, but uh, <laughs> the veil that I could Darby, provide would you're not pay me back for this, right? Like, would not, it just would not once be you enough. Get out, that. like, I'm getting that ASAP, right? <laughs> About I could provide just would not be it, but uh, no, I think that is the tough thing for a coach to kind of work around is having a guy who's going to play his 30, you know, six minutes, just uh, going to wax and wane defensively. I'm not blaming LeBron for that. That's just the situation the Lakers in when you start two guards, as much as I think Austin has improved on the defensive end, you start two guards who are not, you know, above average to average defensive players. And you start them with Torian Prince as well, which compounds the situation. You have four guys in there and Anthony Davis. 
Um, and I think that's a tough place for a coach to kind of make a rotation out of. And I think that's why you see Cam Reddish get inserted into the starting lineup. You see wacky things like Cam and uh, Cam and Torian or whoever it was starting um, for Austin and D'Lo. Um, and the D'Lo point in the last playoffs, and I think, like that's so tough to have your starter who's playing 30 plus minutes a game, having big shots, right? The, the shot against the Warriors, the two threes against um, Memphis, the uh, the 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 hot the game six against Memphis that he just had before that series. I think it's really tough to go from that to then benching that starter, you know, one or two games into a conference final. That's a really tough thing, especially for a new head coach who doesn't really have the resume to do that, right? The he does not have the the credibility to do that yet. Yeah. And you're gonna lose D'Lo. Once you do that, you lost him. And that's what happened. Like you you bench D'Angelo Russell in a playoff game, you you absolutely lose him. So that part I'm not I have a tough time kind of going with, especially in the Denver series. Starting Rui was obviously the correct route. And this is a long kind of thing we can go in later about Darwin. I just, um, the season's going to, is he's going to be, you know, outed as a coach because of what he did to start this season. And I think that's a really tough situation to be in. I'm sure if you gave true serum to Darwin, he's like, hey, look, like, I didn't know what team I was getting. Like, my guards could not shoot for the first two months of the season. Like, I, I had to make a decision. I was fighting for my life as much as I said the marathon quote in December. Like, I was, I think for my coach's coaching life at that point, which um, maybe made some of these decisions tougher for him. So we'll see what happens on Tuesday. Hopefully the Lakers win another two rounds. And, you know, this is a different discussion in, in a, in a few months here. Last thing we, uh, we got to touch on before we get out of here and it's a quick update, but um, AD uh, his quote after the game, no doubt that I'm going to play on Tuesday. Um, nice. Uh, you know, it was apparently just kind of seized up on him. Um, he went up to, it, I, I, I can remember, you know, <laughs> the play exactly when it happened, right? Uh, Gabe misses a layup and AD went to go put it back up on the rim. And as he was doing that, got a little bit of a shove in, in the back um, from, I think, Larry Nance Jr., who was behind him there on the play. This is now two straight games where um, AD had to leave the game. <laughs> Um, yeah, because of of contact at the rim that wasn't called <laughs> like that. That's just that's insane that like they just they've 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 bungled that twice. Um, sure. But yeah, he um, he says he's he's going to be good to go. Darvin Ham said he was really optimistic that AD was going to be good to go. Um, apparently, it just kind of like seized up on him there. Now, if it is a spasm. I've dealt with spasms. They don't tend to be all that isolated. Hopefully this is one of those that it just happened to be like a bad motion that, mm -hmm. that like kind of caught on them there. Um, you do have, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and then most of Wednesday to recover um, between, you know, or no shit. I keep on. I don't know why I've blanked mentally here. Uh, I guess you do try to sit him out. Day. That's why you want him to sit out Tuesday. You're just skipping already to Thursday of, so he can he can play that game. Healthy. I mean, look, I man, see what you're that'd doing. be four I full days to definitely recover. You know, like four full days to like <laughs> take it nice and easy, recover, and make sure that you're 150 percent for that that second game. Um, maybe Jackson Hayes plays like another one of those crazy Jackson Hayes games, and you're able to beat the the, the Pelicans without uh, AD. Wouldn't that be funny? Um, but but yeah, I. I uh, I also like another point that that a uh, Twitter follower made was um, that you know had the Lakers garbage units not been such garbage all season that maybe AD gets out of the game like a minute or two earlier right it was I think the in injury happened with about three minutes to go in the fourth and the Lakers were up by like seventeen. Um, I think because he only played. No, it was, like, no, it was more like no, it was more like six six minutes left. It was still a good chunk of change, a good chunk of time yeah. left. I think we were up nineteen, but eighty would had to play during that stretch. There was no, yeah. there's no way he wasn't. Like again, if we had yeah. a better bench, maybe. But nineteen point lead with six minutes left against a New Orleans team that's very wounded in terms of the lead. I I think he was going to play re regardless. Yeah, I mostly agree. Um it, it well no i 100 percent agree as far as the context of this season right and having sure. seen how bad uh a the lakers are in general when ad isn't on the court defensively and b 
how bad the end of the bench guys are, right? Um, yeah. Like, they have been terrible all season. Um, so, like, yeah, to, to, to a certain extent, like, that, he definitely had to be in the game there. I guess it's more, you know, if, if the Lakers had been able to maintain the 30-point lead, and if the, yeah. the guys um, at the end of the bench weren't so bad, maybe AD isn't isn't out there for for that that moment. Um, and look, like shit happens, man. Like like that's that's right. why you got to take care of business when he is healthy and 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 all that stuff. So that when shit happens, you have some margin for error for that shit to happen. Um, and and you know, fortunately, nobody seems all that that concerned about it. I was yeah. de- like. I was pretty devastated. I'm not going to lie. When, when you look there and the way he walked off of the court, you know, and, and yeah. he looked like me, like he, he looked he, <laughs> like, that's how I walk when I, yeah. when, 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 you know, my, I have to, you know, lift my giant son off of the ground and I do it like <laughs> slightly incorrectly. Like that's how I walk <laughs> for the next like week or so. Um, and so anytime Anthony Davis reminds me of me, I'm going to be a little nervous. Um, but apparently mm-hmm. nobody was all that, uh, you know, concerned about it after the game. And um, hopefully it's it's another game like this, you know, that the Lakers were able to kind of get through relatively pain free. Um, and, and they are able to handle um, their their business early in uh, on on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna go in believing AD is fine because the other world just is not an enjoyable place to live in. So I'm just gonna believe that um, he's healthy, and he's also one of my big Anthony check marks against Denver of my uh, our stars weren't fully healthy last year as well. Like that's another kind of check I'm gonna use in terms of the Denver matchup. We have LeBron with two good. Uh, I think he had an ankle injury last year. I forgot exactly the the injury that he was yeah. kind of nursing, but we have LeBron with two. You no know, good ankles, knock on wood, don't kill me. Um, and Anthony Davis, relatively healthy, because I remember AD came back a little earlier than his injury was uh, supposed to be last season. So hopefully we get a even, uh, not even, because that infers that Denver won unfairly last year. But we get, you know, our stars healthy um, in uh, in that in that playoff matchup as well. And also, I would rather have five games to prepare for Denver. Like, I'd rather, I mean, five days to prepare for Denver and five days off over playing Thursday and then playing Denver in two days. So um, get no, that time, OKC. prepare. No, okay, see, you don't. Oh, I, you're right. Yes, yes. Yeah, dra- oh, well, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the games against OKC haven't been all that close this year. Yeah. Uh, and it's like the it, they are literally the youngest one, one seed, seed ever, ever, ever. Yeah. You like they lose game one at home, and now all would of a sudden, would we be favored like, in that series? Do you think the Lakers would be favored? No, I think that's fascinating. You don't think so? No, I think I, think, I think so. that's very interesting because that stat came out. I, I saw it too. There, I think twenty three point nine is the total years age, which absolutely incredible for them to get the one seed. Yeah, um, with that, but what? As as instantly as I saw that, I said, "Bring them on." I would love to have OKC. Like yeah. as much as I like that, um, but but yeah, but I I'd rather like have the money. You. Get, I give, no, I no, feel no. Like I, if we sat here and talked for twenty more minutes, I think by the time by the time we were done, you'd be like, yeah. "No, it's, it's, it's." I mean, I'd rather have LeBron and AD get five days fully off than um it's three. But days the Lakers are also eight. terrible after after big break, like long breaks. They have been like after the All Star break. Remember, like looked ugly there. It's just yeah, you know. Yeah, but I mean, a game one. Saying. We're gonna we're gonna take game one. Like tonight was to me a very much of an indicator of how. We're about to approach these next few games. Like the Memphis game was a serious, let's just run this clock until we're done. Like, let's just get mm-hmm. the win and get the hell out of here. Tonight felt more of a very business-like um, approach to uh, what's coming. So I, I would not want to uh, tank that game. If it happens, Anthony, great. Like, I'll enjoy it as much as, you know, we are. That game is going to be absolutely hell against the Warriors and the Kings. I don't think you're realizing how much, how that three and a half hour hell that's going to be to watch that yeah. playing game where you could literally go home. Um, so I, I would rather not you know, endure that. But if we played OKC, I wouldn't be mad. I just I think it's going to be Denver. And whatever it is, whatever opponent is, whatever hurdle life throws at you, you go at it with 100 miles an hour speed. So if it's Denver, we you know run right to them. We don't go and hide and you know try to run away, <laughs> shriek at the side of it. I can't believe I'm Billy Mack is wearing camo. 
Okay. Like I'm, I'm at least like I'm trying to blend you. into my surroundings. <laughs> like I'm just trying. Like, like, I'm just like you saying. Uh, like, D'Lo's gonna be wearing camo. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, D'Lo's yeah. gonna have camo. On. <laughs> that's mean. That's not. That's not nice. Yeah. D'Lo walks in. Oh, Bruce Brown is in here still. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's give this a shot. And then KCP guards him. Fuck. <laughs> this is just. <laughs> revenge season baby yes <laughs> oh man all right well that is going to do it here for this episode of the uh lakers lounge um i don't think so like phoenix nothing matters right with phoenix winning nope. or losing here they um, get so phoenix the, gets the sixth the sixth seed yeah yeah uh so the lakers definitely are playing uh the new orleans pelicans again on tuesday to be absolutely yep. clear um, and you know, we'll, we'll, uh, hopefully 80s back doesn't seize up on them again. And hopefully this is just a, this is just a, a one-time kind of thing and, and, and he can fully recover. Um, and Tuesday's going to be, Tuesday's going to be fun, man. Like, uh, I, I do kind of like the fact that the Lakers beat the shit out of them. And so that crowd isn't going to come into that game, like with any confidence whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I like the fact that, uh, you know, LeBron get like as much as we're going to look at, like uh, as much as Willie green is going to make adjustments and stuff like that. LeBron was like absolutely masterful in terms of yep. handling the offense here. Right. And, you know, D'Lo, I think he only finished with like four assists or whatever. And I think Austin, yeah, Austin only had two. Um, LeBron spent a lot more time on the ball in this one. And, uh, I just think like he just kind of sees, you know, barbecue chicken, you know, I, I, I also uh, LeBron getting into the post, right. He knows that nobody there has enough in, in their back pocket to, you know, stop him from getting to his spots if he goes into the post. So I think there's enough there for the Lakers to, to replicate that they'd be able to take care of it. But you know, if they don't, couldn't be the worst thing. What, who it, said that? Like who you said that? I, I, I'm, I, I'm not, don't put that don't put that on me at all that was that, that was all you no I, I, i'm not i am i am not i'm not with that at all um I, I forgot to mention this i just before we go I, I there was a stat that came up from um crumpled uh at crumpled jumper todd whitehead who you know is really good at posting these type of numbers uh said uh he posted the most i don't know if you saw this anthony but most efficient on ball scores and i just wanted to ask you most efficient on ball scores with among the top 50 highest volume on ball scores. So the guys who get the most kind of on ball possessions, these are the most efficient. Austin is 14th on this list in the league. Um, and all the rest of these guys all make $30 million plus. I think that's interesting. I think Austin's kind of looked at in a, an interesting prism amongst fans. I think he's having a better season than people realize. He's also played 82 games this year after doing the USA um, summer you know, experience. I just want to ask you, does that match your eye test as well as Austin, one of the most efficient on ball guards in the league? I, the turnovers kind of get highlighted and just because they don't look very um, clean and smooth sometimes with his ball handling. But uh, I think his offense has really been on an upward trajectory ever since he kind of came back in that starting lineup. But I wanted to kind of push this to you before we end here. Uh, does that match your eye test? I guess Austin is 14th in the league and most efficient on ball scores. No, to be completely okay. honest, not quite. Um, I think when he really has it going, absolutely, like one zillion okay. percent. Um, I I wish he got to the line more this year. Like his sure. free throw numbers, like his free throw late rate, I feel like really declined from last season to this one. Some of some of that I think is like referees not calling as much grifty stuff. Um, some of it I think is spending a little less time on the ball, right? D'Lo is on the ball. I think, I think D'Lo's usage rate is higher than Austin's, right? So, um, close. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you're also playing on a LeBron team. So there just aren't, aren't going to be as many opportunities. Um, but I, I will say that like when he has the ball in the fourth quarter of tight games and big games or whatever, I am not even a little bit concerned. So, right. Like, it's not to say that, like, it's not to say that I think that that stat is out and out false. Like, um, 
I, I think there's something to it, you know, but, um, I, you know, at the end of the day, you're getting $30 million production production from a $12 million player, you know, right. And that's going to be the case for the next couple of years. Right. Exactly. And I'm not saying like the other guys on this list are like, uh, uh, Damian Lillard, Shea, Kawhi, Devin Booker. Right. And these are guys that kind of spearhead your offense in a way that Austin doesn't have to, cause he just doesn't, he's not gaining the kind of defensive attention. Um, but what it, to me, it shows Anthony remember early in the year, we were doing this thing where we would just give Austin the ball at the top of the key. And we're like, Hey, go cook. And he's like, I'm not even yeah. in the kitchen. I'm in the freaking living room. Like, how am I supposed, yeah, right. to, how am I supposed to cook right now? I was holding um, but I think we, a second ago. <laughs> Like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but he's, but we really made things like we've kind of simplified the offense to where he's kind of in more advantageous, situ advantageous situations. He's working out of pick and rolls. Like he's splitting them and getting to the line, getting to the basket a little bit more. Um, I think his threes have come a lot more off of, okay, they're going under the screen. I can step back and take my shot um uh, in time right i don't have to rush it and i think his threes have got looked a lot smoother he's shooting 37 percent now on pull-up jump shooting threes that number was way lower to start this year mm -hmm. i think he's kind of gone to an offensive flow and like the turnovers are are way down since again that time early in this year when we were kind of experimenting we we're just like hey austin go you know run this unit and that's not really the type of guard he is so now he gets to share the floor with the spencer dinwiddie with a gabe vincent with a d-lo for pretty much the entirety of the end lebron as you mentioned um, I just think he's having a better season than I think people realize. Uh, he's averaging like 17 a game on really efficient numbers, shooting like 88, 89 from the line as well. Just uh, at that $11 million number, that's in that's a steal that um, I think, you know, it's kind of gotten overlooked because how bad the Lakers kind of were to, at the beginning of this year. And the defensive shortcomings were kind of put on our guards when it was really like you knew that our guards weren't these defensive kind of stalwarts. You needed size around them. But, um, yeah, I just want to throw that stat at you because I thought that was interesting. All the other guys on that list make, like, all-star, superstar money. And then it's like Austin making his $11 million a year surrounded yeah. by James Harden, Paul George, Kawhi, Devin Booker, DeMar DeRozan. DeRozan makes like 29, so he's like right into that. But Jason Tatum, right? The names ahead of him are Tatum, Kyrie, and De'Aaron Fox. All dudes making $40 million a year. And then it's Austin's name. And then it's Dame's, which is weird. But um, yeah, it's, it's uh, Yeah, I, I think it's. I'm really fascinated by what they do with Austin this uh, offseason. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody I've spoken to, is pretty adamant that he's still not going to be like, it's going to take a lot to, to try to like, if, if a team um, sure. asks for him, you're taking a lot of stuff off of the table. If you're going to put him on it. Right. Um, they love him, you know, personality wise, like they just, they, they, the, the Lakers love uh, having Austin Reeves in the organization. Um, and I, I do think that like, they would be very confident and comfortable Scotty Scheffler just won uh, the Masters. Look at that. He's the best golfer I've seen since Tiger. He's so effing good. But anyway. You could have, you could um, have made that name up, and I would have I no idea. There. Like, but he, like, overlapped with, with Tiger. So, like, of this next generation, Scotty Scheffler, just like he's going to run the shit for a while. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I um, – I, this is how my brain works, man. Like it's so hard. Like I have such sports ADD that like, I just like, Oh, butterfly. Um, but yeah, with, with Austin, I, I think that essentially the, 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 the decision that the Lakers are going to have to make here, because you've seen the names that the Lakers have been attached to going into the off season is Donovan Mitchell, Trey young, right? Those kinds of ball dominant players who, if you're bringing that player in, the other team one is going to be asking for Austin and two, you're probably best off moving Austin because you're going to run into a lot of the same issues that you had this year with Austin and D'Lo, right? Um, I think Trey and Donovan are both better defensively than D'Lo and maybe that makes it a little easier, but it's mm -hmm. still like, it's still a very small, very, um, you know, not strong defensively backcourt that is going to get you into some issues there. And essentially what the Lakers are going to have to decide on pretty early in the off season is, are you willing to gamble on Austin taking another step forward here so that you can go into next year with him as your primary ball handler in, in the backcourt, it would be Austin and a kind of secondary ball handler too, 
who is there to space the floor and and help defend um, for you, right? Think of like I think the person the perfect backcourt mate, ironically, would have been KCP and what he does for Denver. <laughs> Um, you know, sure. but, but like, you know, whether it's whatever dire direction that the Lakers go in here, a lot of it is going to kind of come back to how confident are you that Austin is going to be able to give you at 11 or $12 million next year, what percentage of, of, you know, Donovan or Trey's production are you going to get at 11 versus the 35 or whatever numbers that they're going right. to be making next season? Right. Yeah, that, that's a tough part. And I think my thinking on that is not that Donovan and Trey replace Austin, because obviously those guys are better than Austin is. It's just is that gap 25 million? And can you allocate those resources elsewhere? Because if you trade all and we can get into this, obviously, in the summer, but if you trade Austin, that money's just not enough. Like you're going to need to add another core piece. Right. The Lakers yeah. don't just have dead weight salary, you know, sitting in their uh, sitting on their team anymore. So you're going to have to put well, a core Gabe. piece like. I guess Gabe, that still probably doesn't get you to the number, but yeah, no, sure. Gabe, all the all the people don't really want Gabe, so that'd be just the salary dump yeah. um, anyway. So yeah, and I think that, and I'd rather. I don't think this year either. No, he's not. He has another year on his deal, so year two Gabe will be hopefully better. <laughs> but <laughs> we we'll get into that after. Anyway. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think like if you're gonna move Austin and and bring one of those guys, I think you're gonna open up holes elsewhere that you have to kind of um put resources into, and it's really tough to do that. When you're signing minimum guys, right? LeBron and AD are going to are going are gonna to be signed at such a number that you're not going to really have cap space to operate within, and um, and those first round picks are probably gone. Whatever deal that you're making for these guys, so I think it's an interesting way to look at it. It's just uh, Austin's obviously the name that you're going to throw into every trade because that's the guy that teams want. Um, but I would like at least some thought to go into who you dump him for is important to me. And uh, yeah, I think Trey Young. I mean, not dumb. Excuse me. Yeah, trade him for because like, those are actually good. <laughs> those are good players you're getting Mitchell. back. Like, <laughs> sure. If you get good Donovan players Mitchell, back, it's hard to sure. call it a dump. But but that, yeah, I mean, that's it's, fair. It's, that's, it's a, it's a big decision. Yeah. Um, but that decision is coming a full playoffs away. Hopefully, um, yes. The Lakers have the the the, the play in that they are looking forward to on Tuesday. And they have um, a lot of work between now and the off season to hopefully get done. Um, and I'm, I'm legitimately curious how all of this plays out. You know um, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite where you are. Like I'm not nearly as optimistic about the Denver's a Denver series, potentially as it sounds like you are. Um, but there are some factors that you could point to, to where that gap may have shrunk just a little bit. It would, I would feel so much better about it if, if they had Vando, but reality is they aren't going to. Fair. And, and, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see what that looks like. If the Lakers were able to take care of business on Tuesday, as promised, I'm going to be working over the next 48 hours to try to bring in uh, somebody who covers the uh, new Orleans Pelicans uh, to, to talk about that game on Tuesday. Uh, so you have that to look forward to this weekend. Um, I'm also, I, 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 you can hear my son is stoked about this. Uh, he's just <laughs> thrilled back there. He's, he's saying bring on Denver back there. So uh, yes. he also just might be yeah. excited by the, the amount of times I've said nuggets. Like he's probably thrilled. <laughs> oh, now, now he's crying. Cause I called him fat. Um, so until the next time you guys hear from me and, uh, <laughs> and by the way, 20, 300 almost 2400 people tuned into this thing between twitter between youtube all of that good stuff so please do hit that subscribe button please do uh head on over to youtube.com slash at lakers lounge to uh subscribe to the content that we're putting here on the youtube channel as well if you're listening in the morning via podcast hit that subscribe button wherever you get it preferably odyssey and until the next time you guys hear from us i'm anthony irwin that was raj chapalu this has been the lakers lounge Rest up, AD. Rest up. You know, take it easy. Just think, <laughs> consider it. You know, just think. Bring about on it. your.